All right, if you're YouTubing this, you're probably wondering what is a cavity, what is a dental filling, and that is what I'm gonna explain today. Hey guys, Dr. Nate here at Thrive Dental and Orthodontics, and I wanna review exactly what is a filling. When you're coming into the dental office, you get all these cavities, and what the heck is that? How do you get a cavity? How do we fill it? That is what I'm gonna explain today. All right, let's go to the basics. What is a cavity? What is a cavity when you get it on your tooth? So what happens? So basically what happens is you're eating all this food, right? Mainly sugars, and that's why we say to avoid sugar. But you're eating all these sugars and you have bacteria in your mouth. And the bacteria is also on your teeth. And I don't care how much scope or Listerine or whatever you're swooshing with, you still have bacteria. We have bacteria all over our bodies, in our mouths, and you should also probably not be using Listerine every single day, but that's for another story. So you have bacteria that is on your teeth and you ingest all this sugar, right? The sugar itself isn't necessarily eating the tooth and the bacteria itself isn't necessarily eating the tooth, but what happens is the bacteria takes in all this sugar and the byproduct of it going through the bacteria is an acidic substance and that acidic substance is actually the thing that will gently and slowly over time erode the teeth so it's not like the bacteria themselves are munching away your teeth and you know eating those little, little teeth it's actually the byproduct of the sugar that gets processed by the bacteria to become this acidic substance which basically over time demineralizes the teeth. Now this doesn't take like a day or two or three, this happens over time. And that is why with proper brushing and flossing and rinsing, you will not get cavities if you take care of your teeth and mouth properly. So what are things that can prevent you from getting cavities? Well, one is our natural bacteria that we have in our mouths. And we get this from our parents, we get this passed down. Some people just have stronger bacteria that are less prone to giving you cavities. So one, it's genetic, so that's true. Some people are just genetically predisposed to getting more cavities. But if you are having great oral health care, so that is brushing at least two times a day for two minutes, flossing every single day, and maybe using any auxiliary tools that you need to use, you are going to have less or potentially no cavities because your oral health is so good. So think about this, if the sugar gets on your teeth, you know, everybody's gonna have a little sugar here and there. If you're brushing and flossing properly, that sugar and the acids that are produced and the bacteria are gonna get washed away. But if you're not brushing and flossing properly, that acid's gonna stay on the tooth and it's eventually gonna erode it away. And as the days, weeks, months, years go by, that acid that is on the teeth slowly gets into the teeth. And if it takes away enough of the tooth structure, that becomes a visible cavity. Now here's where it gets a little scary, a little dangerous. The outer surface of our teeth is made of enamel, and that is one of the strongest substances in our body. So it is meant to withstand these forces, the bacteria, the acids, so it doesn't degrade. But what happens is once the acids get far enough and they eat away at the enamel, they will hit the dentin. And the dentin is an organic substance that is definitely not nearly as strong as enamel, and it's quite porous. So once the acids and the bacteria hit that level, they're gonna spread like crazy. So once you get it to the, we call it the dental enamel junction, the bacteria and the acid spreads and it can really, really damage your teeth. And now we're at the point where we're saying, what is the difference between a cavity, maybe a crown, and a root canal? And so this is what happens. That bacteria and the acids going into your tooth, going into your tooth, you're not taking good care of your teeth, and it gets to the dentin, spreads like crazy. And what's underneath the dentin? Underneath the dentin is a pulp chamber where there's nerves and blood vessels. This is like the lifeblood of the tooth. So if the bacteria and the acids go beyond the enamel, beyond the dentin, and they get close to or in the pulp, that is gonna create a ton of pressure and inflammation. And then inflammation really has nowhere to go. So it just kind of builds up and that can create tons of tooth pressure and pain. So if the bacteria and the acids get to that level, if they get to the pulp chamber, to those nerve and blood vessels, or very close to it, you're likely gonna need a root canal. So this is what happens. So you come in and you have these medium-sized fillings and we say, hey, we need to take care of it before it gets bigger. But due to time, finances, whatever it is, you decide to wait to the next visit. And what happens is that that next visit, that cavity that was eh, kind of medium-sized now has, boom, gone huge 
because it got to that dentin layer and spread like crazy. So now instead of just being a filling, it becomes a root canal. And a root canal is basically when we go in there and we take away the nerve and the blood vessels because it is infected and there's no real way to cure that without taking off those nerves and blood vessels. So that's the difference between a cavity and a root canal. A cavity is when the bacteria and the acids have not reached that inner portion or even very, very close to that inner portion. And a cavity is when it's still kind of mainly on the outer surface and we can prevent it from actually getting worse. So I know what you're asking, you're thinking, hey, can I just reverse a cavity because you know the bacteria is still there, so can I just like take some fluoride and it'd be good? Well, if it's super duper duper small, you can actually reverse a cavity, but they have to be super small and your oral habits have to go from like being pretty decent to absolutely perfect but it is known to happen, but it's super, super rare. So if the cavity has reached that junction, we say between the enamel and the dentin, you can't really fix it on your own. That's when you need a filling. So you know, you know what a cavity is, so how do we fill it? We don't really use amalgam or silver fillings anymore because I think they're just a little dangerous. They have mercury and all these substances that we don't like to use anymore. So we use something called the composite and that's just a couple chemicals kind of mixed together that solidify and get really, really hard and they look fantastic. So they look exactly like your tooth structure. So some people have fillings and you can't even really tell what it is. All right guys, there you have it. That's the difference between a cavity and a root canal. Now you know how you get a cavity. Remember to prevent it, try to eat less sugars. And if you're eating sugar, eat them less frequently. If you're eating sugars or drinking sugars, you definitely want to rinse with some water or something that is going to make it so your pH level doesn't get so dang acidic. All right, that's the difference between a cavity and a root canal. So remember, if you have a cavity, try to get it fixed before it becomes a root canal because when it becomes a root canal, it is just so much more difficult to treat because not only do you need the root canal, but you also need a crown and I'm going to go through that in a different video. So thanks for watching guys. Dr. Nate here at Thrive Dental Orthodontics. Remember, I'm putting out videos every single week to leave your questions and comments below and I'll do my best to answer them and I'll see you in the next video.